Today uh, I'm going to speak to Ben Coomba from Awesome Supplements and Ben Coomba Limited. <laughs> nice. I was like, Body Type Nutrition. Yeah, there we go. Body Type Nutrition. So we've spoken briefly about the topic, and I know I gave you short notice, really, but um, I wanted to discuss with you the top mistakes that you see nutrition coaches making throughout the entire process. You know, be that consultations or the actual implementation or the advice they're giving. So. What would you say is the the main one that you see that people are kind of getting wrong? Well, not wrong, but could they could change for the better, maybe? Sure. Um, I'm not going to say top. I think all of these five points that I've got are equally important, and we shouldn't sort of, you know, we need to be broad practitioners. We need to really understand our trade. Our trade isn't uh, being people that can regurgitate stuff we've learned on our PT course. Is <laughs> We are people that know stuff that need to connect with people and implement positive change. Nice. So uh, personal training, people quite often miss out that first word, personal, <laughs> that we are not actually considering that we are dealing with people and emotion and dynamics. It's all really, really important. Um, so the first point I've sort of written down is um, people not thinking they're clever enough, that there's always this kind of pa panic in the back of a coach's mind that, I need to know more, I need to go on this course, I need to do that. And that's brilliant. I'm a course provider, whatever, but my job is to motivate and instill confidence in the trainer. So mm. even if someone goes through like our foundation level uh, nutrition course, for example, it's pretty basic stuff, yeah. but it's fundamental. I don't want someone getting to the end of that nutrition course going, oh, I need to now go and do this, I need to now go and do that before I can help people. The, the chances are, 95% of your clients know none of that information. Yeah. They don't know how to get to bed on time. They don't know what to drink. They don't know what to eat on a basic level. They don't know what protein sources are. All of this is really basic info. Yeah. But trainers are looking at people like me and other, you know, quote unquote experts and saying, oh, I need to know as much as bear before I can help people. You don't. The basics are all the stuff that no one's doing right anyway. No one's getting to bed on time, eating enough, like all that stuff. Yeah. So I think it's having confidence that actually a basic level of knowledge when applied effectively can be immensely powerful for 95% of the population. I agree. <laughs> and I suppose that gives me a segue into my second point is that once you know, so I've been in the fitness industry for roughly 11 years now. And all I've done over 11 years, I suppose, the first four, five, six years was me gradually overcomplicating everything for my clients, yeah. getting more knowledge, saying, oh, we need to be doing this, we need to be doing that. And I've probably spent the last four years making everything as simple as humanly <laughs> possible for everyone to implement and follow because like, that's the aim of the game, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, Sit down with Richard Branson on a train, one of the most successful people in the world, he won't overcomplicate anything for you. He'll probably give you one, two, three tips and just say, go away and do that, do that, and do that. <laughs> and it will fix so much of your problems. And that's, mm. that's what I've tried to develop myself as a coach, as a teacher, to be able to just say, just go and do that. Just go and do that. So then there's loads of trainers running around getting their coaches to carb cycle and reverse diet. And, you know, I'm not saying all these things don't have a place. Yeah. But we've got to bear in mind where are our clients at, meet them at their level. You know, if I'm working with an athlete, awesome. Give me a carb cycling plan that undulates X, Y, and Z, brilliant. <laughs> but for 95% of the people that we're talking to, perhaps we're just being a bit too clever. We're trying yeah. to satisfy our own egos going, look what I know. And I, I, I know this emotion because I was that coach. I was the coach that for... 95% of my consultation time with a client just spent talking to them about all the shit that I knew rather than listening to them and you know actually just giving them a couple of tips that they can go away with and go bang there you go just do yeah. that let's work on that for the next two three maybe four weeks and you will get massive change makes a lot of sense I think I, I really agree actually I was talking to someone the other day about um behavior change with personal training clients and he said when I train personal trainers to talk uh, kind of like motivational interviewing and that sort of stuff he said the biggest thing that he sees that people lack is genuine listening skills and um, 
I think that's a massive part of it. And I think that's something I'm going to kind of start studying as well. I think from a for both of us, with our students especially, I think that could be quite important. And then for PTs, it's a whole other level of importance. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that that was the third point that I'd written down, and you beat me to it. Is about is about listening. Like coaching is about being aware of everything in front of you and just literally simplifying a road. Like every one of us or most clients are so utterly confused about what is right, what is wrong, the best diet, the best training program. Should you squat? Should you deadlift? Should you run? Should you not? People are paralysed, and the more you listen, the more you can simplify. Mm-hmm. The less you listen, the chances are you end up being dogmatic, doing what you think is the right thing or what you tend to do. And this is where we get caught into patterns. Like there's a huge amount of trainers that you know do what they do. Let's say you're a bodybuilder, you give someone a bodybuilding looking diet. Yeah. Let's say you're a crossfitter, <laughs> you give someone a crossfit looking training plan because you're not listening effectively. Yeah. You're not paying attention to them, their emotions, their circumstance, their environment, their finances, their emotional state, their spiritual state, their belief system, mm. like everything. And the more we listen, the more we know. So, you know, 98% of your consultation time should just be about probing. Like, think about um, a therapist or a counsellor. They don't talk and sit there and lecture you how to think. <laughs> they sit there and ask key little questions that unravel your own problems and really lead you to your own conclusions. Yeah. Because when you are led to your own conclusions, you are in a power, you're in an empowered state. Massively. Because you own that decision rather than me telling you, Josh, you should eat this for breakfast. And you're like, great, Ben, but I like eating this. Yeah. <laughs> if I start to talk to you and lead the horse to water, you take the drink. I don't force the bucket under your face and get you the yeah. drink. And I think the more coaches can understand, the more we can empower. Makes massive sense. Because I think, I think back as well to when I was like, um, when I was 15, when I did my gym instructor course, I had a woman, I can't remember her name, she might, I'm, I'm going to say Brenda. As, but she um, she came in wanting fat loss and, you know, she wanted to lose a few inches. And I put her on a five-day split, you know, Monday was chest, Tuesday was back, you know, that sort of thing. And then the meals were just like, you know, right, you're going to get some chicken and some rice. That's a bonus. And, you know, it was just ridiculous looking back. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's where I had this, you know, I think I had this realisation about probably about four years ago. And same situation as you, my first ever client. I thought back to the environment with that first ever client that I coached and I just thought, I did nothing that that person asked me for when he came through the door. But I did everything that I thought was the right thing. The guy walked through the door and said, look, I'm tired, I'm overweight, I don't feel energised, I'm unhappy. And all of a sudden I had him rolling around on a Swiss ball, doing 45 minutes of stretching, had him eating (laughs) fucking fuck knows what. But, you know, in reality... I didn't listen. Yeah. I was dogmatic. I had ego and that didn't right. lead to a good outcome. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I didn't know if this was meant to be a PC. Nah. I've already dropped three F bombs, so I apologise. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Winning. Cool. What's number four? Um, walk the talk. Now, I think there's a pressure to a certain degree from a personal trainer, just as the same as there is a client degree where we feel we should walk our talk, that we should look a certain way. And I don't want people to think of the extreme, like every personal trainer should look like a stage-ready bodybuilder. Mm. Like you should be ripped, you should have the chest, the ass, the quads, you know, whatever. No, I'm not talking about that. When I talk about walking the talk, I think a trainer should be at a reasonable body fat percentage, as in it looks like they look after themselves rather than they do what they want at the weekend and they're trying to give this advice to other people. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to be, I'm not going to say lean, but leanish, healthy looking. But more importantly, you need to kind of look and feel alive. Like remember, you're in a position of empowerment. So you should look like you're well slept. You shouldn't smell. You should look presentable. You should look happy. Like you should be a bundle of joy to be around. Like all these Mm -hmm. things your clients are aspiring to be, you should be. Your client isn't, aspiring to be a stage-ready bodybuilder, nor should you, but 
They're aspiring to be happy, healthy, have good hair, skin, nails, appearance. So you should be yeah. a product of your work. And the amount of trainers that I see that are tired, look like they've only slept about five and a half hours, you know, look like they ironed their kit last week, but their dog's been sleeping on it. I'm like, <laughs> like come on, take some pride in both yourself and your work because yeah. you are a product of your work. Massively agree. I think it's even simple things like with with the the whole client client facing image. Like um, as an example, there was a PT in the gym that we have our academy in who smokes before like every session, and I'm like, what what the hell are you doing? Like where yeah. where is that going to get you really long term? Nowhere. And there's another guy who you know when someone wears the same top for like five days running. And then there's a small area around that person in the gym that's empty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's crazy. I just don't understand how people don't see it. It's just... See, so coaches will listen to what you've just said and go, oh, God, yeah, I wouldn't imagine smoking. That's ridiculous. And that is an extreme example. But yeah. even all these little things, the thing is they just all add up. They yeah. add up. Like, literally, maybe get someone to take a photo of you and say, right, I'm now going to look at this photo. When my client walks on the gym floor, that is what I see. Yeah. Now, if I took the head off that, regardless, like, would I be impressed? Should I be proud of that? Because, mm. again, I am now a product of my work, and I need to represent what I'm trying to teach other people. 100%. Just the same as I wouldn't walk up on stage not looking, you know, like I worked out, <laughs> like I looked after myself, like I got a good night's sleep, all of that stuff because I've got to stand there and teach other people. Well, yeah. <laughs> Turn up wearing a bin bag, stinking a gin. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not the best bet. Right, what have you got for number five? Uh, number five is systemizing your business and caring. So uh, I think a lot of personal trainers have uh, very, quite often, poor admin skills and it's something that you have to learn, you have mm -hmm. to master. And the chances are it would really pay for you to sit down and learn off someone that is good at admin and customer care. And this shouldn't cost a lot of money. Go into your phone book and find the friend that you know that works for a company in customer care or customer yeah. support and say, look, mate, can I take you out for a beer or I'll even pay you 20 quid for an hour or two to sit down. Tell me what happens in your business. How do you look after clients? So think about the systems that you have as a PT you do an assessment, right, great, step one. What happens after that assessment? Most people don't do anything until the client turns up for that next session. Yeah. You didn't show them you cared because you had a lack of a system. Mm -hmm. Could you have texted them that night and said, oh, really great session, it's really good to meet you, I think we're going to have do great things together, you are a great person. Like, just fill them with confidence, show yeah. them that you care. And then, you know, a week after when you've given them your plan, send it in a nice pretty PDF, then follow up with a text and say, I've sent it to your email inbox, it's all there, we'll talk about it on X day, we've got a Skype arranged for then or whatever. It's about having this system so that every time a client comes in, you follow it, you give them little moments where you show them that you appreciate and you care, and that is going to lead to massive, massive performance out of that individual and much better word of mouth marketing nice. because they're going to value you. Think about the last experience we had buying a product. Like I love just like most people using Amazon. Why? It's simple. I get a follow up email. I know when it's coming. I get a text for delivery. Like all these things, they've refined a system that shows that they care about my delivery. Yeah. Whether I've paid two pound or two thousand pounds, it doesn't matter. Their system of caring is the same. I think more coaches need to do that. Yeah, that's blown my mind. I like it. I like the Amazon uh, comparison. Ah, my mind. But, but we're all in business. PT's yeah. in business. So you've got to think about the business side of it. Look at amazing companies that you look up to. Analyze them. What do that company do brilliantly to look after me as a customer and your client is the customer? Yeah, 100% agree. I think, um, I think the two key points that you've spoken about today, I think the listening and the customer care, I think they're the, to me, they're the two that resonate on the gym floor that I see people, you know, not doing at all. Like, I just, I just never see it, mm. you know, especially, I mean, uh, again, I was talking to someone, you know, about the behavior change and the, someone buying into your program, 
you know, psychologically, they're actually motivated to be there. And I think just the small things like sending text messages and just checking in with your clients, I think it's so simple. It takes 10 seconds and people just don't do it. Yeah. It's just unreal. I just don't understand. Yeah. Um, we're actually, uh, we're pretty much bang on time now. But what I'll probably do is um, I'll edit this and then this will go onto Peter Toolbox once we relaunch it. Um, we'll also transcribe it so there's a blog post version and we will um, put subtitles on it as well in case people want to watch it quietly. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll probably drop you a message and if we could arrange a couple more, that'd be awesome and then we'll go from there. Yeah, it's great, man. No worries. Awesome. And just let me know when the Daily Dose is back in stock and I'll order like six or seven tubs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, when you've edited it, will you send me a copy? Yeah, of course. Cheers. Ah, one more question. Yep. Um, if somebody wants to get in touch with you or find out more information, where can they go? Uh, if people want to find out more about me, uh, they can go to bencoomber.com, type Ben Coomber, C-O-O-M-B-E-R into Google, you'll find loads of stuff. Um, you'll find links to Body Type Nutrition there, or some supplements. For most trainers, they probably want to be listening to my podcast, number one rated in the UK, it's free, over 225 hours. Ben Coomber Radio, give it a listen, you'll learn loads of cool stuff, and if you want to find me on social media, I'm everywhere, get in touch, uh, <laughs> and hopefully we'll speak soon. Awesome, thank you for your time today, and uh, right. I'll speak to you in a bit. Ladies, dude. Perfect, thank you, bye.